This Week in Agribusiness, serving America's most essential industry, is brought to you by Case IH. Coming up on this weekend's broadcast, government agriculture economists lay out the path as they see it for the rest of this year. Hello, everyone. We welcome you to This Week in Agribusiness. It's always a pleasure to be able to join you here. Mr. Pearson, out off the hot trail, where have you been anyway? You know, I have been back and forth. I was up in Fargo at the 7th Annual Northern Corn Soy Expo. A lot of optimism there in the northern yeah. Great Plains, but a lot of snow. And then I was in Louisville, Max, at National Farm Machinery Show with you last week. Last week. Great crowds. We had a good time there, to Great be sure. Time. You were not at the National Ag Outlook Conference. That's an interesting event that is held every year, early in the year. The government economist, indeed, showed their projections. I think this was the 99th year for the event. Oh, wow. And this year, of course, they took a look at farm income, reflecting back on last year and what's to come in the year ahead. 2022 was a really great year. 2022 was a really great year for farm income. Okay. Got there with a lot of anxiety. Remember, I told you we had incredible volatility on both input prices and output prices. And so you know, when you talk to producers, that produces, that's a lot of anxiety. Where are we going to end up? Okay, when we look forward into receipts in the coming year, those lower commodity prices are going to reproduce lower receipts across the board, but they're coming off of what are pretty high receipts. Okay, so you had pretty high receipts for all those commodities, and in almost all cases for crops and livestock, you're seeing that recede a little bit. USDA Chief Economist Seth Meyer shared his view on exports for the U.S., and he said uh, the strong dollar could be a challenge. One of the things affecting our exports again is, you know, th this graph shows you energy price movements, ag price movements, and the strength of the U.S. dollar. You have seen energy prices begin to recede. You have seen ag prices start to fall. You've seen the dollar remain relatively strong. That does produce some headwinds for us when we think about exports. Those commodities are priced in dollars, the dollar is expensive. It makes folks wanting to buy commodities from us, makes it a little more expensive. So you can observe that within you know, the export market. But on the other side of that, the strong dollar makes US consumers available, able to import certain ag products that they like. Yes, indeed, the dollar, I guess, as you look at it from a U.S. standpoint, is a two-edged sword. Then you look at South America's crop production. It's hard to ignore what's happening with soybeans. That's certainly true. Dr. Meyer highlighted what's coming out of South America this year, but importantly, he looked ahead to what could be coming down the line. When you think forward and you look at the outlook for this, you're talking about a 204 million metric ton crop out of South America in terms of soybeans. Under normal weather, it would have been more like a 210 million metric ton crop. What do you think that crop looks like next year? You know, you're talking something, something in the neighborhood of 220 million metric tons of production somewhere in that neighborhood under a normal weather assumption. That's a lot of beans. So what we've seen is a big rebound in production. This production will come in halfway through our own marketing year of beans. I mean, it's, it's coming in right now in terms of our, our production and then we will see again a larger crop base under normal weather conditions next year. That was Dr. Seth Meyer, chief economist at the USDA. There was a time when they held that Ag Outlook Conference in November and back in those days it spanned five days. It was quite an event then. 